Welcome back, everyone, to the Brian Crumby Radio Hour. Uh, we're still chatting with Adele Purdom um, because I wanted to chat a little bit about her challenges, about being a mom, about being a writer, about uh, she she mentioned something about the imposter syndrome to me. Uh, and so uh, I thought it'd be interesting to, to broaden our conversation a little bit and chat about that. Uh, Adele, tell me about sort of the challenges you've got in that regard. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Brian. So I think being a woman and being a creative that we face, you know, some additional challenges. And I I was thinking about what those are for me and also how they kind of play out in my book, how I talk about it. Um, I think the first one is the very real immediate need of your children, (laughs) right? I think, sorry, I said being a woman, but I I guess I mean being a mother and a creative. And um, yeah, there's like this very immediate need of your children when they're younger, it's this struggle to try to find the time. You need to have the support. Um, and so like, there's that immediacy of looking after your children's needs. And then, but there's more at play, right, as well. There is also navigating the sort of outside pressures. So if you have a spouse or partner, it's sort of, you know, that division of labor. Um, there's that piece, but then there's also... I guess those who love you are in in your circle. Like, do they support you as an artist or not? Or do they think that you should be doing other things? And not just those people, I guess I mean society as well at large. What do we expect of mothers? Um, Not, I think there is this real expectation that you aren't doing things that are for yourself. There's this expectation you're doing things for others, for your family. Um, at least sort of in the context that I was raised. And um, it's sort of, it's like an invisible pressure, but you feel it as a woman and as a mother. Um, If you have a family, well, your family should be first, right? Um, How dare you be so selfish as to think about writing a book or doing something that you might enjoy? (laughs) Um, So that's sort of the second like level of it. There's like actually wanting to take care of your children's needs. And then there's these outside pressures And then the third thing you have to deal with as a mother and a creative is sort of your own self-doubt, right? And getting over that. And so I remember I was reading, I was reading a book and it was Bahara Orang's um, like a meditation on beauty. Oh, it was called Where Things Touch. Really gorgeous, lyrical, poetic book. And I came across this word, aporia. And this was this was kind of years ago when my children were still a bit younger. And so I was really in the thick of it. As time goes on, it gets easier as a, as a mother, in, in my experience, um, to be able to also make time for my creative work. But anyway, I came across this word, and the word was aporia. Have you heard of that word before, Brian? I haven't. Tell me about the definition of aporia. Yeah. So aporia, I mean, I'm not an expert, but it's it's a literary term. It's sort of like... Um, pretending the way I interpreted it was um, how do I, how do I describe it? A feigned or pretend doubt. Okay. So there's a poem by Elizabeth, Elizabeth um, Browning. It was actually read at my wedding by my sister-in-law and it's called, how do I love thee? And that's an example of an aporia because she says, how do I love thee? Like she's expressing a doubt, but then she goes on to give all these many ways, Right which actually kind of shows like, oh, you, you know, you're pretending like you don't know, but you really do know. And so that term, once I figured out what it was, immediately it resonated with me because I was wanting to be a writer. And so instantly inside me, I had this feeling of, I'm the one pretending like I don't know what it is that I want to do when I know exactly what it is I want to do. So then I had these questions around, well, why is that? Why am I pretending like I don't know what I want to do, that I want to be a writer, that I want to express myself in this way? And it was, and so I have an essay in my collection called Aporia, and it's an exploration of this idea. But I think it comes down to not wanting to get hurt, not wanting to be told that you can't in whatever way like you can't create if it's something that I, you know, when it's something I really need to do. And so it was sort of a self-protection mechanism 
to pretend like I didn't need it as badly as I did, right? Because women have to, women mothers have to put their kids' needs first, rightfully so in many, you know, in a lot of ways, but also we uh, there needs to be a way to find and keep our own identities as people, you know, in and of our own right as not women and as mothers. A, not just being a mom or a wife. Yeah, exactly. Because we were somebody before those those identities, those roles, right? Um, and I think having children has irrevocably changed that for me. And in ways, um, I would never take it back. I would never change that. But I guess, so then the question in the essay becomes for me, how do I be who I am and also be the mother I want to be, right? And I guess over time, it really, it's biding your time. So <laughs> that's what it comes down to, I think. So as my children got older, I found ways to incorporate. I mean, I, I was a classroom teacher and I used to teach young children and now I teach creative writing. So these things come more, um, maybe they come more naturally to me or, but I, I found ways to sort of bring this literary life that I wanted to create for myself, bring it into my family and, and into my children's lives. And my youngest daughter and I have written poetry together. Um, I mean, you just kind of find ways to make it work. <laughs> if uh, you, you ran into a mom, who had a disabled daughter um and uh, she said that she needed some time to herself because she had this dream of being a author or a poet or a screenwriter or what's whatnot uh, but that she was struggling because her her child took a lot of time and effort um and uh and her family took a lot of time and effort and that uh, she wanted to be the best mom that she could possibly be uh, to her her family what would you tell her I think to be the best mom you can possibly be for your family, that you absolutely look need to look after your own needs. And that mom has come up to me. That has happened many times. I've run, um, I, I think I founded a writing retreat for that very purpose of wanting to be able to give women time and space who needed it to be able to write. Um, I think... Yeah, I, I'm a huge proponent of when we look after our own needs, then we can better look after our family. I think it really comes down to having a supportive spouse and uh, in your life's partner. And I mean, if you don't have that, then being able to build a community of support around yourself so that you can get some time and space away, right, when you need it. But Whereas if when you read my book, you'll see that there's this real big theme of wanting freedom and wanting to get away. It's funny how that shifts. Like my youngest is eight years old now, and I don't feel that as strongly. Like they, the children learn too, right? Like, okay, mom's in her office. We need to give her some space. Like they, they also, they understand. I think it's teaching your children as well. Like I have needs. And it's okay to have needs and and that you can take some time to do those. My husband, you know, to fulfill that. My husband travels for work and I also travel for work, right? Um, yeah, sorry, I hope that answers that. <laughs> Why does this whole conversation apply to moms, not dads? Yeah, it applies. I guess in my situation, I, I start saying moms a lot because... I stayed home for nine years looking after my daughters, but I absolutely think it could apply to a dad who stayed home and looked after the kids. But I still feel as though we live in a patriarchal society and the, the expectations for men and women still feel different to me. There's still more of a pressure I that think it, put on uh, women. Is that a pressure that you put on yourself that you're, that your family puts on you, your husband puts on you, or that society puts on you? I think it's something that's been conditioned in me since I was young, and also something that is still prevalent in our society. Um, yeah, it's, so, it's just, it's something to keep thinking about and exploring for me. 
this idea of why do I feel, why do I feel these pressures so intensely? But I think it must have something to do with the people, like, you know, the way my parents interacted with each other, um, the role models I had growing up. Because I'm sure not everyone feels. Was your mother stayed home mom? You know, no. My mom was a school secretary, so she she worked really hard. Um, she worked part time when we were younger, and then full time. But my they had very traditional roles. My dad worked was a, a mattress salesman, worked outside the home, traveled for work. I said I would never marry someone <laughs> who had to travel for work, and then obviously my husband travels for work all the time. But I just saw the stress and the strain definitely that that put on my mom, who did all of the cooking, all of the cleaning. My dad's lovely, too, and did many things to help in other ways, you know, did the garbages and the grass cutting, you know, what some people call blue jobs and pink jobs, which we just need to completely get away from that. But But yeah, you think that 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 upbringing and and society pressures has just sort of created that expectation with you within you even though you're highly educated you've uh, had great jobs uh, you you've got a a husband that similarly has been supportive but yet you have streamed yourself into more traditional kinds of uh, roles yeah interesting like i i guess i think whatever your interests are you should be able to pursue them and not feel like you're doing something wrong. So my interest when I was in my 20s, 20s was I loved children and I wanted to be home and I wanted to be the one to raise my own children, right? Um, and so I should be able to do that without judgment. And then when it comes time to wanting to build my own career, then, you know, my husband's career has gone like this. It, he stays, I always say he stays constant. And for me, like there's been all these roller coasters of like going through pregnancies and then working and then having a, you know, a period of time where most people will look, would look at me and say, she's not working. Although I was doing probably the hardest job there is, which is looking after children, uh, writing a book, doing things that aren't traditional. Like, you know, if you don't get paid for something, then the work isn't doesn't get valued. valued. The same yeah. Yeah. I'm Adele, doing a ton of volunteer work. Yeah. Sorry. Adele, go this ahead. Has been a, this has been a fascinating conversation. I really appreciate it. Remind everybody uh, the name of the book and where they can get it. My book is called, I don't do disability and other lies I've told myself and you can get it wherever books are sold in the bookstores, chapters, Indigo, grab your copy. Adele Purdom, thank you so much. That's our show for tonight. Uh, Thank you, everybody, for joining us. I remind you, I'm on every Monday through Friday at 6 o'clock on 960 a.m. Good night, everybody.